Greetings of the day everyone. Hi, I am Gunika, a student of BA LLB 4th year and an intern at UB Advocate. In today's video, we are going to talk about what is Unantia and its legal position in India. The word Unantia is the combination of two Greek words, eu which means goodly and thantos which means death and collectively it means good death. Referring to its dictionary meaning, Unantia is the practice of intentionally uh, ending the life of a person in order to relieve pain and suffering. Defining it in medical terms, it is an act of ending the life of an individual who is suffering from terminal illness or is an or is in incurable condition by administering a lethal injection or by suspending the life support system, say ventilators. There, there are different types of administering eutentia. Starting with active eutentia, it refers to the physician deliberate act, usually the administration of lethal drugs to end an incurably or terminally ill patient's life. Passive eutentia refers to withholding or withdrawing treatment which is necessary for maintaining life. Talking about on the basis of consent, eunantia can be classified into three categories as voluntary, involuntary and non-voluntary. In voluntary eunantia, the person who is killed has requested to be killed. In non-voluntary eunantia, the person who is killed has not made a request and has not given a consent due to his inability to communicate his wishes as the person might be in a vegetative state. And in Involuntary eunantia, the person who is killed has made an express wish for not to be killed but still he is being killed. Now, coming towards the legal position in India, we first need to know whether Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, that is the right to life and personal liberty, covers in, it, in its embed the right to die or not. The same question came before the Supreme Court in the case of P. Ratinam v. Union of India where the constitutional validity of section 309 of IPC, that is, attempt to commit suicide, was challenged. The petitioner herein argued that section 309 was unconstitutional because it violated article 14 and 21 of the constitution. The Supreme Court, in its judgment, said that section 309 is violative of article 21 only and not of article 14, and it was reentreated by the court that where the patient's intention to remove his res respirator did not constitute suicide but rather exercise of his rights. However, in 1996, in the case of Gyankor v. State of Punjab, where the same question was brought before the Supreme Court, it was held in this case that right to life does not include right to die in its ambit, and Section 309 of IPC was declared constitutional. Yet again in 2018, in the case of Common Cause v. Union of India, the court in its constitutional bench held that an individual has the right to die with dignity and is covered under Article 21. Herein, the Apex Court also legalized passive inertia in India. Now coming towards uh, the landmark judgment uh, of this uh, concept that is Aruna Ram Chandra Shonbaw case. Now, what happened in this case was that Aruna was a nurse at a hospital and she was attacked by a hospital sweeper who sodomized her. Due to this, she choked and went into vegetative condition. A petition was filed to remove the support system by a social worker. In the judgment, though the Supreme Court did not allow Aruna for passive eunantia, but it laid down several guidelines as relating to eunantia. The Apex Court, in its judgment, protected the parents' patrial concept of High Court. It was provided that when a request for passive eunantia is made, the Chief Justice of the High Court should convene a bench of at least two judges to decide whether to approve it or not. But before doing so, the bench should seek the advice of a committee of three reputable doctors, which it will appoint after consulting with any medical authorities or practitioners as it deem appropriate. In addition to appointing the doctor's committee, the High Court bench must also issue a notice to the state and the patient's close relatives. In addition to this, the court also recommended that Section 309 of IPC should be repealed. Internationally talking, Netherlands was the first country to legalize eunantia. Even uh, physician-assisted suicide is also legal here. Further, in the countries like Belgium, Luxembourg and Canada, it is legal. However, in the countries like India, Ireland, Mexico, Peru, the position as to active eunantia is still not legal. Thus, now the position as to India is very clear. It only allows passive eunantia. In the modern day, just like medical tourism, the concept of eunantia is also gaining wide popularity.